Welcome to the Business in Hawaii show. I am your host, Galen Yanagita, and my guest and I are live from our home offices on Oahu, Hawaii. If you want to tune in live to any of the Think Tech shows, we are live at www.thinktechhawaii.com. While there, please subscribe to our programs and get on our mailing list. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local businesses by local people, and our guests share with us their expertise, trials and tribulations while building successful businesses right here at home. In the Think Tech studio today is Zachary Marita, educator at New Valley Middle School. Not only is Mr. Marita a music instructor, but he is also the winner of the 2018 Farmers Insurance Dream Big Teacher Challenge and the president of Hawaii Youth Percussion Ensemble. Mr. Marita is an innovator who breaks the mold when it comes to educating our young people. He inspires his students to become entrepreneurial thinkers using their passion for music. I am so honored to have Zachary Marita on the show today, and I want to welcome you, Mr. Marita. Thanks for joining me. Happy to be here. Thank you. You know, I um, before we started the segment, I I was telling you about just how amazed I am that you are able to take music education and combine that with other valuable life skills like entrepreneurial spirit, like building a business, like thinking and designing through a, a business plan. Um, and I wanted to ask you. What inspires you to deliver education that's so interdisciplinary, right? Um, tell me about that. Tell me about your passion. One of my beliefs is that school education should um, should help students prepare for life. Yeah, it's not it's not for the future necessarily. It's because they're they're living life now and they're alive now, and we have to bring them those skills and that they are gonna need. Uh, to be to be successful and to really have an impact on a community. And if they continue just doing textbook work, worksheets, um, even in band, if they just play the same song over and over again for like three months at a time, that's not helping them. It's it's going to give them some value at that moment in time and they're going to feel good and they're going to get the A, uh, but really it goes beyond the, beyond the grades. It's amazing. You are president of the Hawaii Youth Percussion Ensemble. Tell me about that organization. Um, it started about six years ago um, to give students in Hawaii an, an opportunity to pursue their passion in percussion. As a percussion is my main instrument, um, and it's something that I really advocate for. Um, I really believe in that anyone can anyone can do it um, if you have the if you have the passion if you have the desire. Um, and it's for a committed group of students to share their love of drumming. Very nice. Um, I know that you have um, some photos to share with us today of some of the work that you've been doing with your students in, in HYPE. I understand that's, that's what you call it for short, HYPE. Um, could you tell us some, about some of the, the things that you folks do? Um, so the first picture is a screenshot um, for a video video classes that we're now doing uh, during this time of distance learning to give uh, students an opportunity to still have music as part of the as part of the curriculum. Um, so sometimes I do step in, uh, but for the most part, we have our hype students uh, that do teach other students. Uh, we actually have a teacher uh, from another school who was really interested in learning about percussion, so she joins in every week as well. That's fantastic. Um, I know we have, I think, a couple of more um, photos that um, kind of um, showcase what you do with hype. Yeah, so the next one um, was a project uh, that we launched called Drumming for Healing, eh, and it was in honor or in dedication to our health healthcare workers and first responders, uh, just because they're doing so much. Yeah, so using music as a way to give back. Uh, so we had 30 video submissions from 25 different people. Uh, we had some people from out of state as well. We had two math teachers um, participate. One was elementary school, one is at Pro City High School. So a whole bunch of people, some that didn't even really have music background, right, but they wanted to be a part of this project. And it was really exciting and really, it came out really well and we were happy about it. So how did that distribution happen? The um, Drumming for Healing, was it sent out over social media? Yeah, so I put out a call on social media uh, and they, we use this program called Soundtrap 
and also we use iMovie. So I'm not a very techie person. Uh, so it, it, it was something that I had to research. I saw all these cool virtual ensembles. And I thought, hey, we should try to do one. And I was able to figure it out and we got lots of participation. Uh, so yeah, it was, it, was, it was good. It was a nice thing to do for, for our community. I think one of the key things that I'm hearing from you is that you bring together people without any music experience build their passion for music and deliver amazing things. Do you often draw in people without any music background? <laughs> on social media, um, a couple of years ago, I started on Twitter. Uh, and Twitter has been a lifesaver for educators. Like there's so many um, people on Twitter, educators willing to share. Uh, and through that collaboration, through those connections, all these ideas come up. Yeah, and it's something that I really believe in, and I hope that other people watching this will also sign up free, uh, free resources. Uh, there's monthly chats sometimes, um, and just discussions that go on uh, that really elevate learning and education for our students. Fantastic. Um, I know we have a couple more pictures um, about, um, about hype, and I'd love for you to tell us about it. Um, so this one is also related to uh, the COVID-19 pandemic that we're in, uh, where there's a lot of live musicians um, who are really not getting any income uh, right now because concerts, live concerts, symphony performances have been canceled. Uh, so there is this organization, mm -hmm. uh, the New Music Solidarity Fund. Uh, they raised about $100,000, but within a week, uh, they actually ran out of all of that funds because so many people were applying for it. Um, so um, I got some of my students and they made quotes about music and why music is important to them. And then made these posters and to, to promote this, this fund uh, to, to support our, our live musicians. Now, you must have a secret to how you get students because I'm homeschooling two <laughs> of my own. <laughs> but how do you get students to jump into a project of course, that's not part of their required curriculum and get them to be involved in that. How do you do that? It, like for anyone else, parent or teacher, it is, it is a struggle. And it's something that we have to continuously find what is relevant and what is purposeful and what means something in our world. And we have to get the students to see that value and realize that their impact or their work can have an impact on, on others. And once they feel that, like they see someone post a, even just a simple comment on something that they did, they, they feel validated. And so we have to continuously find ways for them to do something, to create something, and not just, not just think about it. It's not just the knowledge spitting out of information. So I understand that a lot of this work that you're doing with hype, um, and even with um, just a, a group of students that kind of hang out in your space uh, is not even part of your required curriculum um, over at New Valley. Is that, is that correct? I try my best to kind of weave everything, everything in um, because everything is, everything is connected. Um, I, I try as much as possible, uh, but sometimes with um, with education and with public school, there, there is um, restrictions, yeah, and we try to find ways that we can go beyond uh, what the system allows for us. Yeah. I know that uh, some of your students have shared that um, you, you gave them a, a place to express themselves and um, to dive into other interests. Um, and I know that you were kind of leading them down um, a business building project. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, well, it was actually a student, um, someone that you know very well, uh, who had the initial idea of launching a business. Uh, because like you had mentioned, I wanna find ways for my students to find relevance. Okay? And money is always a motivating factor for, for anyone. Yeah, and so we, they thought that a business could be a perfect place to, to start with. Uh, so they started brainstorming what could a music percussion business do. Uh, so they came up with things like they could charge for performances. Uh, they could write their own music and do publishing. Uh, they could make sticks and mallets, produce sticks and mallets and, and sell it. Yeah, so they're still in the brainstorming stage. Uh, but I, 
uh, one way that we're practicing it is through the online teaching lessons. Yeah, like if they get good enough, mm -hmm. and that is something that they could definitely pursue as something that has value and that people would want to support, especially if they have a curriculum uh, that they actually work on getting lessons. Like what would lesson one be? What should we teach for lesson two? And having all of that mapped out, uh, there is real value to, to that that other educators uh, could want as part of their, their, their learning. Well, again, I, I commend you for, you know, taking student interest and just going with it, even though it doesn't fit a traditional, um, perhaps a traditional music curriculum. Um, and as a parent, I, you know, I, I am so appreciative of um, educators that are thinking outside the box and, of course, bringing, bringing together the different disciplines and, and showing our kids that, um, that they can have passion for something. And all of it just kind of fits together. Um, we are going to take a quick break, um, but when we come back, I wanted to talk about some of the other things that you are involved in, which are equally as amazing. Um, so if you bear with me for just a minute, we're gonna take that short break. This is Business in Hawaii. We'll be here back shortly. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Being a lawyer has many aspects, and I try to cover them every time I do a program of law across the sea. Not everything has to do with law or being a lawyer per se. Some of it has to do with the people you meet, the things you see, the places you visit. And that's what I try to combine in Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Thank you for watching. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii. With me today is Zachary Marita, educator, innovator um, from New Valley Middle School. Mr. Marita, I, you know, we talked about the Hawaii Youth Percussion Ensemble for which you, you represent um, and, and which you've inspired many middle school students to, to participate in. But there are a number of other things that um, we know that you're involved in, some of which are very, very significant grant opportunities. Can you tell me about some of those other projects that you're involved in? Uh, one of the projects that we just kind of wrapped up uh, was a movement called Hashtag 808 Educate. Uh, so it is a group on social media that started on Twitter, uh, but that has now moved also to Instagram and Facebook, uh, where we want to connect educators in our state, public, private, and charter school, uh, to just have a platform, have a place, uh, where they can share ideas and resources to have positive conversations that are going to elevate our the state of our ed um, education. A and we had a challenge to get 808 educators on social media uh, through these platforms. And then we also uh, connected with Henry Capono, um, who put on a concert at the end of that challenge. Yeah, so we did meet the challenge. We're actually about a thousand educators strong right now. Uh, so there was really wow. exciting to have that performance dedicated to our educators. Uh, he did shout outs. We were able to take song requests. Uh, people dedicated certain of his songs to their, their te team teachers. Some of them did it to the entire school. Some principals did shout outs to their teachers and their students. So it was a really nice event to honor our teachers. Wow, fantastic. Um, I know that we have a couple of photos of yet some other things that you've been doing. Could we put that on? Tell yes. me about this one here. So this is the, um, so Henry Capone, this is the concert um, that he did. It's called Dukes on Sundays at Henry's house and he does it every week. And it's in support oh. of his foundation. He has a Henry Capone foundation, um, but mm -hmm. this one is specifically dedicated to educators. And then that student in the front is a New Valley a student, also a member of Hype, 
um, who is actually neighbors with uh, Mr. Capono okay, and um, kind of introduced the concert and said what the purpose of it was. Fantastic. And I think we have one more. Yeah, so this one um, is a project called April Madness um, that relates to March Madness for uh, college basketball. Um, and what I did, instead of having basketball teams um, going at it with each other, we did it for classical music to, to support symphonies and orchestras. And then it was a month long um, event. And at the end, it was Beethoven Symphony 5 that came out as the crowd favorite. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. Um, was there another one? There is, yeah, so this one uh, was to me really special because our students at New Valley composed a full program. I think it was eight pieces um, of their own music and each song they dedicated to a public school educator and then they presented their performance live at the at McKinley High School for the Hawaii State Teachers Association, Honolulu District Institute Day. Wow. Um, and then and there, voice something additional as well? One more, yeah. It's another uh, project that I'm working on uh, with some educators um, called Voice, uh, where the initial idea was to get $5,000 uh, for our students to recreate education. Yeah, to, so to go against the status quo uh, to not do what we've always done, but to really truly innovate from the perspective of our students, our learners. Just amazing. You know, and I think it's, it's such a valuable lesson that you're teaching to our young people to understand the idea behind innovation, because innovation really um, is the start of some of the most successful businesses. Um, and, and some will fail in and failures are good too. Failures are great learning experiences. Um, I, I think it's an amazing skill that, that you're leaving with them. Um, I wanna talk about the Farmers Insurance, the 2018 Dream Big Teacher Challenge, um, which, which uh, you won a huge grant. I believe it was $100,000. Um, tell me about that. I know it was statewide. Um, so it's a grant from Farmers Insurance Hawaii to put on what is called the New Valley Music Olympic Invitational. And we were able in our inaugural year uh, to have over 170 students uh, representing 20 different public, private, and charter schools uh, in, the, in the event. Uh, we were so lucky to have had it um, early March. So right before all of this happened, uh, we were able to have the competition. We were able to have the winner's concert. And I really feel that it has strengthened our arts community. Uh, we even had a guitar ensemble. Uh, we had a harp group as well. So those are instruments wow. that you don't normally get to see, uh, but to see them and to see their teachers really proud, proud of them, put in the hard work to showcase their, to showcase their talents. Uh, it was an awesome event um, for music in our state. Um. And I, I, I know I could just go on and on because I, I'm pretty aware of the time that you invest uh, with, our, with our young people. Um, but I know a recent, and I, I saw you um, do a presentation recently um, for a, uh, I, I wanna say it was a mini conference online. I mean, given our current situation, um, conferences now look a little different. It was a webinar um, by the Teach for America Hawaii um, and I, I believe it was an iLab series where you and along with uh, other educators were getting together and um, pitching ideas about how education can be redesigned. And you gave a presentation on um, your idea to build a performing, a community performing arts center. Tell me about, tell me about that project. <laughs> Okay, so this is like huge. And after winning the $100,000, um, I really believe that anything is possible, that if the community wants it and we can rally around the right kinds of people uh, with the right kind of vision, uh, then we can bring to life anything. Yeah, so even though when I did my research, there is a performing arts center in Florida that cost $160 million to build 10 years ago, so I'm pretty sure ours would probably pop 200 million. Uh, that that there is so much value to to this and when i when we keep talking to people and i keep getting students involved 
um, there are so many connections to other disciplines where maybe it's not just a performing arts community center that we can bring in other subject areas, history, math, uh, science, maybe media. There can be a media program attached to this and we can have hubs on each island or maybe in different communities, we can have various gathering, gathering places. Yeah, and I want it to be a place where students feel valued, uh, students feel connected, uh, where they feel like they can truly explore their passions uh, while getting guidance from professionals in our community. So is this an opportunity for you to join? Does the Farmers Insurance Grant and this project come together in any way? Or are they completely separate? Um, they're completely separate. Um, but this could definitely be a home um, for the Music Olympic Invitational. Mm, I can see that. Um, this project, though, is, is very large. Um, and it's going to require a pretty good deal of um, research, of design. Um, and, and tell me about how you're bringing your students in to, to those ideas. Uh, there's a principal on the Big Island. Uh, her name is Janice Blaber, and she was in on the presentation as well. And she had mentioned that it would be perfect to have the DOE uh, have a course, like a design course, where students could use this as their main project and where we can get students input. They can design it. They can maybe even build it and help, help in building it. Yeah, and maybe they can volunteer or they can work at this at this um at this community performing arts center as training real life training yeah, so there's so many facets so many connections that we can make with this one this one building and I'm, I'm really excited to what could happen and i think this is a photo that we have up right now um of your uh well this is just this was the first annual is that correct yeah first annual annual very nice very nice. Um, I actually had an opportunity to attend and it was amazing. Um, giving students an opportunity to showcase their talents. And I know that it meant a lot to them. Um, I, you know, I've, I've always admired educators, but I think what you're doing is taking that one step further and really engaging students in an opportunity to learn just so many skills and drawing in other educators um, to bring in their, their specialty areas to, to help you build that. Um, the community also has a lot to gain um, by your ideas. So tell me what the future is for the Community Performing Arts Center because I'm really excited about that. I'm really hoping that we can talk like it, it's really who you know, uh, so really finding the, the right people uh, that we can talk to uh, that have had, I think, everyone has had ha has, has connections to music and growing up, maybe they had that special place in music uh, where they played a band instrument or they went on some trip that was life changing for them. Yeah, and just because you're not, you don't have a career in music, there are so many ways to appreciate it and to, and to support it. And this definitely can be a way to do that where there is music in anything and everything in our, in our lives. And through this pandemic, so many musicians have used music as a way of healing. Uh, like there was that viral video in Italy uh, where musicians came on their balconies and they started playing together. Uh, again, I talked about the virtual ensembles that people are doing that are really just giving people hope and lifting people up and showing how important and how timeless music really is. Well, I certainly hope that all the good work that you're doing isn't just limited to um, middle school, because I think that you have so much to share with with just the community in general, and not not just uh, middle school students, but elementary school students, high school students, and beyond. I I can I can really see that. Um, I think a lot of times what we know is that being an educator sometimes it's a thankless job, and um, and I think that it's important for you to know that um, you have made impact on people's lives. And I have an example of that. Um, there are three who claim to be your favorite students <laughs> who would like to remain nameless, who wrote you a letter. <laughs> and I'm gonna read it to you. It says, dear Mr. Marisa, thank you for all that you have done these past three years. 
from eight hour rehearsals to online teaching sessions, you have always been there to support and inspire us. We consider you as a teacher and a friend, and we have accomplished so much with your help. And we enjoy working with you. We have had so many exciting experiences in your music room, even through tough times like right now, you still came up with ways to make our education system better. Thank you for all the memories and because of you, our future is really bright. And they wish to remain nameless. <laughs> um, I, again, am very excited about all that you contribute to our community. Tell people out there how they can get in touch with you if they're interested in joining you in your project uh, for the Community Performing Arts Center. Before I say that, I want to thank those three students. Um, uh, it, it, re it really means a lot when students share how they feel and they show appreciation. Because like you said, yeah, it's not something that a lot of kids do at this, at this young age. So I, I really thank them uh, for, for that. Um, okay, as far as connecting, uh, you can email me at Zachary underscore Marita at nvms.k12.hi.us or probably easier to co connect with me is on social media. Um, I do have accounts. I reactivate accounts on Instagram and Facebook um, for a challenge that we had a couple weeks ago. Um, but my main one is Twitter. So at Zachary Marita, Z-A-C-H-A-R-Y. M O R I T A. So those would be the best places to connect. And I'd be happy to start conversations with anyone out there who is willing to support. Uh, we, we want a grassroots effort. Like we want thousands and thousands of people to be a part of this because then they're going to have a stake in it. And once it's built, they're going to want to support it. I wanted to thank you again for joining me. And I will be on the lookout for all the good that you do. Um, unfortunately, we are out of time. I want to thank Zachary and Marisa again for joining us and a big thank you to our production staff back in the studio. If you would like to be a guest on our show, please like us and subscribe and leave a comment below. Business in Hawaii airs every other Thursday at 2 p.m. and we look forward to seeing you here soon.